Welcome to Garden Valley Church Podcasts. We are so looking forward to having you join us today. Well, hi guys. Welcome to the Youth Culture Podcast. Hi guys, welcome back to the Youth Culture Podcast. I'm back with Sam. Hey, what's up, buddy? How you doing? Good. How you Good. doing? Yeah. I'm doing well. Oh man, today's gonna be a fun conversation. Um, as we were kind of dialoguing a little bit, I'm very excited for you guys to be able to kind of jump into this conversation with us. And I hope, as we begin this uh, conversation in this podcast, that you would begin to open your mind and really just allow your heart to receive all that we believe God wants to do and to say through this podcast. And so with that said, uh, Sam's got a few questions. We're just going to have a dialogue and talk about creation and talk about why the story of creation in the Bible is so important and why, um, how that connects us to understanding God's love for us and living out unconditional love. So I want you guys to buckle up. It's going to be a fun episode. Um, I believe that this one's going to be power packed. So here we go. All right, Sam, take yeah. us away. Um, so, I mean, the general question is, what does creation mean to you, right? Yeah. Because a lot of people think Big Bang. Some people think it was created by God. Of course, we're in the church, so we sure. obviously know for a fact that it is created by God and how he created that. So what do you think creation is? Well, I think it's interesting because I do believe that there is – obviously scientific proof right, right? right that creation happened a certain way and i've heard it said that you know in the story of the tower of babel mm -hmm. where tower of babel came and and uh, god split them up that that's when the earth was split and it mm -hmm. was like moved and all that kind of stuff and you could actually compare that to the story of pangea yeah right Pretty so crazy. It's like, you know or like the thing with mythology and like uh, zeus and mount olympus and all that kind of stuff well um that kind of has to do with the story of in the Bible where it talks about like the fallen angels, mm -hmm. like being cast yeah. out of heaven, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Like, so I think a lot of it is just kind of a misunderstanding of what the church as a whole has said by creation to be right. right? It's almost like it's this competition of like mm -hmm. big bang versus creation. Right? right. Right. And honestly, if I'm honest, I think it's both, you know, I think there is scientific proof that I don't believe that the, the, planets went boom and then there was this big right, you know right. like, that's a lot to take on um it's similar to um without going too much into it but like the, what darwin thought mm -hmm. where over here we have like dinosaur bones and on this side of the world we had dinosaur bones so obviously you know the world was together at one time or another and so um but to me the story of creation is so filled with god's mm -hmm. intent and his purpose for us and i think for me as I've grown older and just, you know, gain knowledge and learn things from other, you know, different sources, other pastors, other theologians, those kinds of things, it goes to show that creation um, is kind of a mix of like that whole thing of like science and at the same time what the Bible actually says. Right. So if we bring those two together and we kind of marry them instead of it being like this big competition, what we find is the Bible says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and, and the world was in chaos or mm -hmm. it wasn't even formed, right? It right. was mold, or molded. It was actual chaos. So it says, um, and the earth was without form or void and the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the deep. And my understanding of that, as we read that, is that the spirit of God was already in that that mm -hmm. unknowingness of creation right and so my thinking with that or the kind of the image i get when reading scripture and actually breaking that down between other translations and greek words and or hebrew words etc um god actually pulled from his reflection the world right. because it, the world was made in his image mm -hmm. right and so we have like God created the birds and he created the sea and the land, etc. I mean, there's all these different things from the first few days of creation, right? right? And then he creates man. What's interesting to know, if we do a Hebrew uh, study, the word there 
um, for God coming and breathing into man. See, we've heard it in the church. It's the breath of life. Right. Well, that's a word called ruhi, R-U-H-I, versus the ruach of God, which is the breath of God. Mm -hmm. And so one of the most amazing things, if we begin to look at Scripture and begin to study that out and break those words down, um, it's the same occurrence in the story of Noah, where God says, I will not have man live with his own breath within him and right. because they had sinned and done mm -hmm. all this stuff. Yeah. And the flood happened, which yeah. was really one of the main reasons that happened. But going back to the story of creation, in that, God breathes his very DNA, his very essence. If we think of that as like an intimate term, right? Um, for those of you watching, whether you're a teenager or an adult, I'm just, we're going to go there. But it's almost like the very sperm of God came into us as humans. Like right. he, he instilled his DNA into mm -hmm. us. And that's such a crazy thought. And so to me, the story of creation is so much more than just the Big Bang versus creation. Right. right. Um, it really is kind of the foundation from which we as believers live from. Mm -hmm. So. Wow. I liked it. That was pretty good. <laughs> um, Thanks buddy. So when we're talking about creation and talking about where we live now in modern society, in the age of technology, absolutely. Where everything's so accessible, everything's so easy to create and do things and learn things. Do you think it is essential for us to come alongside God and work with him and uh, till with him and create things with him? Man, I love that question. And I think we see that after Adam is created. What we find in the story in Genesis, it says um, the man felt lonely because mm -hmm. he didn't have a partner to do life with. Right. Um, you know, the single person didn't have a wife <laughs> or the, right. the, the woman didn't have the husband, right? It's like that whole thing. Um, so God takes the rib from Adam and creates woman, mm -hmm. right? And um, it's also interesting because um, there's a whole study on the names of what Adam and Eve mean and all that kind right. of stuff. Um, and without going into too much detail, you can go and research that. But in the Hebrew, it's really amazing when you understand what Adam and Eve actually mean and how that correlates with God. Um, but with that said, I think that what we see in that story is after Adam and Eve are kind of become one, as the Bible mm -hmm. says, right? Like they become man and woman and they become one, like they're married, you know, married right. and all that stuff. Um, and eventually have family and the whole Bible goes on before the fall of man. But in that, before the fall of man, I find something that's so fascinating about that story is that man begins to partner with God. Mm -hmm. They're in the garden. Yeah. We don't know how long they were in the garden with God. It doesn't actually say yeah, before crazy. the fall of man. Yeah. You know? yeah. So they could have been doing life with God for all that time. You know, mm -hmm. it's that whole idea. They're sitting on the back porch, having a Coke together or some French fries or like, us sitting around like being bros and hanging out, right. you know, but at the same time they're strategizing and they're, they're, you know, God says to Adam, I want you to name these animals. Mm -hmm. And by Adam speaking that you are the elephant, the way I understand it is that DNA actually was formed as right. he spoke it out. Right. And that's what it means to co-create and partner with God. And I know for me, starting a business and being an entrepreneur, which is super tough. Yeah. You have to have gut and grit and you have to be willing to do the hard stuff in that. And so I think looking at it from today and how that connects, I think that a lot of people just don't understand that we can partner with God. Mm -hmm. You and I are having a conversation. Maybe I want you to talk a little bit about it, but just that whole idea that like so often the church is living for services instead right. of living for life. Right. You know, yeah. So I'd love for you to talk about that. Um, I feel like there's a lot of misunderstanding of what it is to come alongside God, especially in the uh, youth and the young adults and tilling the ground and working with that because it's not just doing the services. It's not just helping out. It's also within yourself. 
Absolutely. It's also figuring out, Lord, what do I need to work on so I can become more like you and how I can love and live with him? Because you can't find any joy, love, peace, unless you have it with him and you create that with him. Yeah, absolutely. And so I think it's difficult for some people, and I know for me, <laughs> to find that focus and find that drive and find that grit that you're talking about. Sure. So, yeah, that's it's a big thing, I think. So leading on to that and then just kind of expanding on that, I think that's the part we're partnering with the Spirit of God. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't know necessarily because it doesn't say that Adam was tired when he was creating with God. Right. It doesn't say that. Mm-mm. What we do know is he was actually in partnership with God. Yeah. Um, the same as Jesus was in partnership with the Father. He says, I don't do anything. Anything I do is never outside of the Father's will. Right. right. Like right. I'm only doing what I see my Father do. Mm-hmm. I'm only reflecting that. And so it's in that where I think even Jesus being human had to rely on the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says um, before he was sent out in the wilderness and did all those amazing signs and wonders and miracles, right before that, the Holy Spirit descended and fell upon him for such time as this. Yeah. Before it was the Spirit of God within, right? Um, So the Bible says that the Spirit of God was upon him. This is my beloved Son whom I'm well pleased with. Mm -hmm. And then he was sent into the wilderness. Right. Or before going to the cross, he prayed, God, if, you know, if this cup can be passed for me, let it pass. Mm -hmm. But there still is that thing of like, God, I'm still partnering with you, even even though, you know, I may not understand. And so with Adam and Eve, I just think the story of creation is so powerful in seeing how man, woman as well, right? Because we empower women as well. But it's that thing of like, Together, we get to partner with God. And right. going a step further, the Bible says that we will do greater things than even Jesus did. Mm-hmm. So what is that? And I honestly think when we live and pursue the call of God over our life, it all of a sudden becomes so much bigger than us. Right. And it's actually impacting other people. So and, good. and then it creates a legacy for mm-hmm. other people. And that goes even further into, okay, now we're actually creating a different culture than the world. Not that we're trying to, uh, uh, you know, be like the United States to Canada, like right. we're separating, <laughs> but it's like, no, like come and be a right. part of this. Be a part of partnering with the spirit be a part of when you feel weak in life have hope Mm -hmm. but not by your own strength by the spirit of god right now and so how does living by the spirit and unconditional intertwine with each other do you think so i want to piggyback off what you said and i think it all comes back to the thing of love um a little bit about my story i shared a little bit of it in another podcast but like I didn't have an actual connection with God. Right. It wasn't until later where I I wanted that. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't know what a pure love looked like. And what's interesting is I've heard examples of people saying, oh, well, I had didn't have parents in my life, and so because of that, I understood what God's love was. Mm-hmm. Well, for me, I have great parents. Now, no one's perfect, and I right. get that. But the thing is, like... Even though I had great parents, I never understood God's love for me because man can't give that. No, yeah. You know, and I know you understand that Mm -hmm. as well. And so I think for me, understanding God's love for you is what causes you to want to live according to the Spirit. Right. It's God's unconditional passion for you that He would send His only Son to die for us on our account so that we could actually live the simple gospel, right? And so, you know, I'm just curious from your perspective too, like what does God's unconditional love look like for you in partnering with the Spirit? Well, I can talk literally at hours about Mm -hmm. this. Um, But I think the main thing is that, I mean, unconditional love is unconditional, right? That's the craziness about it because love that we see here on earth is conditional Mm -hmm. it's always conditional and so just thinking about unconditional is mind-blowing and almost so hard to wrap your mind around that right absolutely and 
the only way I feel like you can fully experience the unconditional love is partnering with the Holy Spirit and living that out, right? And understanding and hearing God's word for you. And so to me, unconditional love is, you know, even though we are sinners, even though we mess up, even though we may stumble, he still loves us anyways. Or even if we walk away completely, he still loves us, yeah. right? And so Absolutely. It, it brings me to the story of um, Saul, Pe oh, Peter, right? Peter, I think so. Uh, where he is on the road to Damascus. And before this, he's killed millions. Oh, Saul. Yeah. Saul, yeah, yeah, yeah that's who Paul, it is. Yeah. Uh, he, he's killed millions of Christians, persecuted them. Mm hmm and it'd be like isis nowadays or some crazy yeah. terrorist yeah that's just it's crazy crazy but yet god still loved him anyways he encountered him and completely wrecked his life <laughs> he wrote half the new testament or right, three the new right. testament it's crazy and that just is an, a prime example of god's love like even though we can do these awful things to ourselves or to each other that he still waits and is saying hey you know i still love you hey i still love you so good and so my question to you is what do you think the world sees how how the world truly sees what love is comparative to how the church sees love i'm gonna get my phone out here i want to read something i wrote um and i think this just kind of puts the icing on the cake kind of thing, and, um, and we'll wrap up here. But, you know, I think that unconditional love is something that it's worldly, and it's not something that we understand. Um, okay. So I wrote, this, uh, I wrote this poem called Unconditional Love, um, and it's Lust Versus Love. Her eyes are like the night sky, black with a hint of beauty, expanding my desire for her taste. Her touch is warm for a mere moment, yet truly cold to the touch. Lust, you sink your fangs of deceit into me, and my heart is destroyed. I'm left unwanted and found with shame hiding within. How could I ever be made whole? Yet in the distance, I see you my true love, my one, my all. It is you that I'm seeking. It was you all along. My desire to be touched, to taste, was found in your arms and in your warm embrace. This love, how pure, how right, how healing it is to have found you, to be safe and sound. For in your redemption I am made whole, in your eyes I am made new, in my nakedness you only see beauty. My shame is removed, your breath covers me, and creates a new me. It's your love that breathes me back to life. Wow. I wrote that during a very dark period, coming out of a, uh, a relationship and finding out some not so good news and all mm -hmm. that stuff. but. The Holy Spirit told me that he would never leave me. Right. You know, that scripture, it says, I've never left you, I've never forsaken you. Mm -hmm. um, I think God's unconditional love looks like that. It's right. pure. Where the world lusts after things, where our fleshly desires are to touch and to taste things, God says, no, actually, everything you're looking for is found in me. Um, and... You know, I've had conversations with young guys our age and even mm -hmm. older, you know, how do you continue to walk out this life of purity? And the whole thing is we're human. Right. We have bad thoughts. We have moments, but it's getting back up and walking through that and dusting yourself off and understanding that no matter what I could ever do, it doesn't change God's love for me. Right. Now, it shouldn't enable me to want to sin and to go out there and do things, but it's in that where that love actually captures you and the things of the world begin to fade because you're actually focused on 
God's unconditional love. And when those things come your way, and this is maybe a little practical um, for some of you, you say temptation to look at pornography or to jump into a relationship or to go back to alcohol or like whatever that is, um, drugs or depression, anxiety, whatever those things are, everyone has things. You focus and say, does this match the word of God and God's nature? Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, the Bible says to cut it off. The Bible says to actually, uh, 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 you put it at sword point of the word of God. And if it doesn't line up, that's when you say, I'm annihilating you. And it right. really is a, like a warrior mindset. Yeah, it is. Um, and so for me, I think understanding God's unconditional love changes the way that you live your life. Yeah, It changes the way that you see people. It changes the way that you interact with other human beings and see the gold inside of them because right. you're looking through the eyes of love, not through the eyes of lust. Yeah. So, so good. Yeah. That's my answer. Nice. Do you have any closing thoughts before we conclude? Unless you have a bunch of questions I don't know about. <laughs> no, no, I don't have any questions. All right. Nope. I'm good. Awesome. Well guys, thanks for joining us on this podcast. It was awesome. I hope that this has been beneficial for you guys, and I hope that more than anything, you can also see that even as believers, like we go through stuff in life, and there's a whole there's gonna be a whole nother thing of podcasts talking about like things that believers face and walk through, and how other human beings can connect to that as well. But I hope that that inspires you and encourages you, and I hope that you're challenged a little bit to live the way that God has designed us. And so, Sam, thanks for jumping on here yeah, again. Of course. So much fun. Yeah, good to be here. We'll see you in another episode. Love you. Peace. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you're interested in checking out more of our podcasts as they come available, please download our app in your device's app store or check us out on your podcast platform at Garden Valley Church. We look forward to seeing you next time.